Hi everyone, I'm Elon, and I'm going to present the paper Exxon from Local Explanations to Model Understanding. Recently, we have seen machine learning models being deployed in many high-stakes scenarios, such as healthcare and finance. And why a prediction is made is often as important as what the prediction is. However, most high-performing models, such as neural networks, are black boxes. So people develop many interpretability methods to understand them. As an example, for the sentiment classifier, the sharp local explanation shows that its positive prediction is mainly based on the words memorable and great, which tells us that the model uses positive sentiment words to make positive predictions. Formally, we can represent this model understanding process with a two-stage pipeline. First, local explanations are generated for individual inputs. Then a person inspects the local explanations to identify general trends, such as the use of sentiment words, which become the model understanding. Naturally, this two-stage process comes with two failure points. First, the explanations may not be correct, or in other words, faithful to the model's true reasoning process. This has been the focus of many interpretability evaluation works, such as our recent IIII paper that proposed an evaluation method that induces a ground truth model reasoning process. By contrast, people have mostly ignored the second step, or whether the local explanations, even if correct and faithful, can facilitate model understanding. In this paper, we formalize the concept of understandability and demonstrate that an explicit treatment of this concept can help us correct misunderstandings and gain additional insights from local explanations. So going back to our sentiment classifier, let's assume that the sharp explanation is indeed correct and faithful. Can we really make the statement on the right? I'd like to compare this to the statement on model accuracy, that the model makes correct predictions on positive inputs in general. Well, something seems wrong. In particular, even a random guess model is correct half of the time, and the confusion matrix is used to support or refute statements a model accuracy. Therefore, if we cannot use one correct prediction to study model accuracy, why can't we use one explanation to study model reasoning? In other words, we need the analogous mathematical formalization of confusion matrix for model explanation, which does not exist and is the main contribution of this paper. To formalize our model understanding, let's look at the statement in detail. When we say something in general, we really mean the general data distribution exemplified by the test set. This means that we need to evaluate this understanding on the entire test set rather than a particular instance. Then we see that the statement is about positive sentiment words. So we can define an applicability function that takes in a word and returns true if the word conveys the positive sentiment or false otherwise. For those words, according to our model understanding, we should expect the SHAP explainer to assign positive attribution values. We encode this expectation using a behavior function that outputs this positive attribution value range. The two remaining pieces are the exact definitions of positive sentiment and positive attribution value range, which should be correlated as a more positive word should on average contribute more to the prediction. So we anchor them to this local explanation that we have. Specifically, we say that if a word is at least as positive as memorable, then it should have attribution value of at least 0.48. Conveniently, the dataset provides a ranked list of human annotated sentiment values of all words, which enables direct sentiment comparison between memorable and every other word. So with everything formalized, we can evaluate this understanding on the test set. For one test instance, we expect the word best to have a sharp score of at least 0.48, but it falls short by a large margin. Such errors are actually quite common, unfortunately, and this model understanding turns out to be only correct or valid 3.1% of the time. In addition, these positive words are only a small fraction of the entire corpus, or 1.6 to be exact. Thus, this piece of model understanding is neither correct nor comprehensive. So can we do better? Well, a good thing about this formalization 
is that we can change its components to increase its validity. Specifically, we can lower the attribution value threshold of 0.48. For a 90% validity, we need to lower the threshold all the way to negative 0.01, which means that small and even negative contributions by positive words are not the exception. But if we just aim for a high validity, why don't we just make the range infinitely wide? This feels like cheating, and specifically, it makes our model understanding very ambiguous when we say that a word can have any kind of impact, positive or negative, to the prediction. So to quantify the ambiguity, or inversely the precision of the understanding, we propose the sharpness metric, where a higher value is attained by a smaller and more pointed attribution value range. Mathematically, we define it as 1 minus the area under the explanation value distribution curve within the attribution value range. Indeed, we see that a smaller range has very high sharpness of 0.99, but it is meaningless since the understanding is simply incorrect. By comparison, the larger range has a lower sharpness of 0.29, but with much better validity. More formally, we propose the explanation summary framework, XSUM for short, to understand local explanations for every word. In the simplified demo setup, the word masterpiece has a score of 0.31, and enticing has a score of 0.08. We list all the words whose explanations we want to understand. And we formalize our model understanding with XSUM rules. Like before, we create a rule that says positive sentiment words have sharp score between 0.1 and 1. It covers four words, but makes an error, resulting in a coverage of 33% and validity of 75%. Its sharpness turns out to be 0.88. To understand the remaining words, we establish two new rules, one on stop and function words, and another on negative words, with respective coverage, validity, and sharpness values computed in similar ways. These metric values tell us how well we understand the sharp local explanation. For example, our understanding that stop and function words have close to zero sharp scores is actually quite misinformed due to low validity. In the experiment, we constructed many XM rules for a real Roberta model trained on the SST dataset. Among them, the most interesting finding is the asymmetry in the impact of positive versus negative words. At the same validity level, the attribution value range for the positive rule is wider than that for the negative rule, as shown by the two behavior functions. Although the difference is only 0.05, the two sharpness values differ by a lot, because many words have close to zero sharp scores. But why is the range for the positive word wider in the first place? One possible reason is that to soften the tone, negative reviews are often padded with mild compliments in which the positive words have minimal impact on the prediction. One example is the word great in this sentence, where the main clause makes the prediction unequivocally negative. By comparison, when used as a standalone praise, such as in the second sentence, the positive word does have very high contribution. The presence of these two cases make the sharp scores of positive words more widely varying than those for negative ones. If this hypothesis is true, we could use two separate rules, but we'll leave this to future work. Of course, developing XM rules is not trivial, and to help with this process, we develop a GUI, which you can install and use with four easy lines of code. More information is available at the project website, also linked in the paper. So at a high level, we propose the notion of understandability of local explanations and argue that it is as important as their correctness. While we are the first to formalize this understandability notion, there are other properties of explanations besides correctness that are often evaluated and treated as desirable. For example, human alignment says that the model explanation should be similar to the human's reasoning process. Robustness says that similar inputs should have similar explanations. And we also want similarity and plausibility for counterfactual explanations. As explained in the paper, these properties can sometimes conflict with correctness. So it's not clear why we need them. If correctness is our fundamental standard, 
for good explanations. We, however, demonstrated that they are all special cases and different aspects of model understandability. In other words, explanations that have these properties are generally more easily understandable. Again, details on their connections are in the paper. To conclude, just as we can't use explanations that misrepresent the model's actual reasoning process, we cannot use those that are misunderstood either. Here, we take a first step in formalizing the concept of explanation understandability with the Exum framework and demonstrate that a careful treatment can help us gain additional model insights that will otherwise be overlooked. Based on our observations, we advocate for the development of explanation methods that are both correct and easily understandable.